let us study about Newton's laws of motion. I'm sure that uh, all of you have studied the basics of Newton's laws of motion in your early classes. Let's once again describe the three Newton's laws which are going to be extensively used in this chapter. The first law described by Sir Isaac Newton was inertia law. If we talk just about inertia of a body, inertia of a body can be written as it is directly proportional to mass of body. If we just want to understand what do we mean by inertia, so inertia can be simply written as property of a body to resist change in a state of motion. As you already studied that a state of motion we simply define as velocity vector. So if we want to change the velocity vector, we need to apply a force. And how much change will occur that depends on inertia of body that is indirectly proportional to mass. It depends on mass of body. We can simply say state that if a body is at rest and if you apply a force on body, the body will start moving. Its state of motion is changed. Initially its velocity was zero. Now it will gain some velocity. So if you want to change this velocity vector whether magnitude or direction, we must need a force. So we can simply state to change V vector we need F vector. And how much we are able to change this velocity vector by applying a force, it depends on inertia. If there is a heavy body, we can simply state it will be having large inertia. This implies change in V vector will be less for a given force. Similarly, if we talk about a lightweight body, we can simply state it will be having low inertia. The inertia will be very small. That implies it will not oppose the change in the state of motion. It will oppose very slightly the change in the state. So we can state here change in velocity vector will be large for a given force vector. I suppose all of you are clear with the basic inertia law uh, given by Sir Isaac Newton and it was stating mainly the definition of inertia or it says simply to change velocity vector we need an external force and the amount of change which is produced in velocity vector depends on inertia. If inertia is large it will resist change in the state of motion change in velocity vector is less. If inertia is low for a lightweight body, the change in velocity vector will be large for a given force. If we talk about the second law of uh, Newton's law of motion, this law was named as law of unbalanced forces. We have studied that when balanced forces act on a body, it will be kept in equilibrium. And if unbalanced forces act on a body, we can simply state in case of unbalanced forces, the force will cause acceleration, which all of you know, force causes acceleration. So we can simply state unbalanced forces on a body. accelerates it and we use net sum of all forces acting on body can be written as mass of body into its acceleration. This is the mathematical statement for Newton's second law of motion. We can also write acceleration vector as dv by dt that is rate of change of velocity vector. So we can simply write net force acting on a body is m into dv vector by dt and here mass multiplied by this change in velocity can be written as change in momentum as we can write change in momentum is m into dv because you know mass into velocity is momentum here we can define change in momentum that is dp that is m dv so 
the summation of all forces acting on body which are unbalanced can be written as dp vector by dt. So here we can also write the net sum of all forces acting on body is equals to rate of change of momentum of body. Also you can keep one thing in mind this Newton's second law of motion can be applied for a body as well as it can be applied for a system of bodies in which more than one bodies are there. So uh, we'll discuss some examples based on uh, this particular logic later. Right now let's come to Newton's third law of motion. Now in uh, third law which we define as law of reactions, law of actions and reactions. This Newton's third law of motion is basically concerned with the application of force. Like first law was linked with inertia which causes change in a state of motion and inertia opposes it. Second law was concerned with acceleration when unbalanced forces act on it the body accelerates. This is nowhere linked with motion of body it is linked with the application of force. When we talk about law of actions and reaction the very first point in this law it says force always act in pairs, always act in pair this implies whenever a force is applied always there exist an equal and opposite reaction. This equal and opposite reaction is another force which appears simultaneously whenever a force is applied. For a simple example you can say if on a ground there is a block B and say a boy is standing in front of this block and this boy pushes the block with a force F. So we can state According to this law the block B also pushes this boy A in opposite direction with the same force F but it will act in opposite direction. If this force is F1 this is F2 we can simply write magnitude of F1 vector is exactly equal to magnitude of F2 vector but if we talk about direction the F1 vector can be written as negative of F2 vector. This is Newton's third law and here you can further write that action and reaction are always equal and opposite. If they are equal and opposite we can simply state they will never act on same body. If A is applying a force on B then the reaction force or the opposite force is applied by B on A. So we can also write action and reaction both always act on different bodies. These action and reaction will never act on same body so that the forces can get balanced. They are always acting on different bodies. If A is applying a force on B, B will be applying the reaction force on A which is equal and opposite. So always remember these three points which mutually define this law of action reaction that is Newton's third law of motion. Let us see a glimpse of commonly used forces in mechanics. Whenever we talk about a study of a state of rest or motion, we can say in a study of rest and motion, most commonly used forces are number one is normal reaction at contacts and the second one is tension in a string. Generally normal reaction at contact is denoted by N and tension in a string is denoted by T. And both of these forces are electromagnetic in nature because these are developed due to 
intermolecular properties at a small separation because of which these forces appear. In this situation, if we just talk about normal reaction, the simplest example we can see on ground if a body is placed due to gravity, body is pulled in downward direction with its weight. And due to this mg body pushes this ground with a normal force n, ground will react it with a force n. So, this is the normal reaction which is applied by the contact surface on the body as well as the similar forces applied by body on ground also and they are action reaction pair and this developed due to this mg. Similarly, say if a body is hanging from ceiling with the help of a string, again due to mg what happens? The string will get tight and a string applies an upward force on the body to keep it at rest. This force we denote by T. So, T is the tension acting on the body in the state of rest. Similarly, on the other point of the string where it is attached to the ceiling, the string will have a tendency to pull this point in downward direction. So, tension will also act at this point or wherever is the point in contact with the string or a tight end, this tensile force will act due to the tightness of the string. We will discuss about both of these forces in detail. Let us wait for that.